Hello everybody, today I'd like to talk to you about recent Adam Neely's video Benedictis Puzzle Mathematically Impossible Music in which he claims that you cannot perform this music piece with perfect harmony uh, without pitches of your notes drifting up with every repeat. Uh, this is happening because of certain qualities of the sound related to our perception of dissonance that I will touch later on, as well as ways to get around it and to perform unperformable. Okay, so what is music piece with uh, perfect harmony? That is music piece that is performed in just intonation. And just intonation, it's a tuning system uh, that is a system that defines pitches of notes that we use when we play music. Another example of such system will be a 12-tone equal temperament uh, that is a standard uh, in modern music, so all Western music recorded, composed and performed in 12-tone equal temperament. Just intonation and 12-tone equal temperament have the same number of notes, uh, 12, but the pitches of those notes are different. And you see, uh, notes of 12-tone equal temperament uh, are exactly the same distance away from each other. So all uh, semitones are the same size. But in just intonation, it's not true. Some semitones are a bit bigger, some a bit smaller, and it doesn't seem to be that mathematically perfect, but it's not about how it looks, it's about how it sounds. So you see, the thing with just intonation is that it is the only tuning system that is coming to us from the nature itself. Because all the notes of just intonation are contained within the spectrum of one note. So what do I mean? So now I will use this Pianotech plugin uh, tuned to just intonation from the note C, and I will show you how some of the notes are contained within the spectrum of this low C note. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to press very slightly the note C above it, just to raise the damper on the string, and then I'm going to hit low C really hard. And as you can see, this octave higher C is ringing out, because of such thing as sympathetic resonance. And I can do the same thing with other notes, like for example with note G. With note E. With note D. And with note B. And also you can see those frequencies on the spectrum here. So, the interesting thing about this note B is that if I retune Piano Tech to equal temperament, and I'll do the same thing with note B, well, there is a little bit, but it's, the sound of it is much weaker. It is because the frequency of this note does not correspond to the harmonic of this low C. And that's why it's not being excited when I hit the low C really hard. So this is usually how just intonation is explained, but I believe that there is a certain problem with this explanation, because as you look at the spectrum here, this note C has a lot of harmonics. In fact, it has infinite amount of harmonics. And by that way you can say that all those harmonics they create certain notes that you can use and they should be like harmoniously sounding with this note C. Which is kind of true, but also it's kind of incorrect because we know that some intervals are more consonant, like fifths or fourth, than for example thirds, and thirds are more consonant than second intervals. So, where does that come from? And to show you it, I came up with two tracks here, these two yellow tracks. That's a recordings of harmonic spectrum, of the sawtooth wave that has all the harmonics of harmonic spectrum. So the top one is just the sound of uh, note A, 440 hertz. So let's listen to it. So it stays on this note. The second track, harmonic sweep, also has the same exact spectrum, but it goes up in pitch. As you can see. And when I be playing together, 
I will be showing you a spectrum of those two nodes. They be uh, showed here with different colors, and you will see how at certain points in the sweep, the partials, the harmonics of each sound will coincide with each other. And those are the times that correspond to some note of just intonation that I will also show you on the screen. So make uh, sure to follow the partials and the points where they coincide. So let's play the sweep. So that last note was an octave, it, it was an octave interval, and as you could see, all harmonics of both spectrums coincided. So what does it mean? It pretty much means that when we play two notes that are octave apart, that doesn't add any new information to the spectrum, and that's why we perceive it as one note, as note C. You know, it's not different notes. But any other notes, like fifth, for example, they add new information to the spectrum, and that's why we perceive them as giving some kind of a color, some kind of a dissonance or consonant, some kind of play of harmony. By this point, you may wonder, okay, so it's all good, but if just intonation is such a cool tuning system, why don't we use it on all our instruments? Well. It is because of this problem pitch drift that Adam Neely was talking about in his video. And to show you that really quickly, let's again go to our piano and let's tune it to just intonation. Just intonation on a note C. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play you C major triad. Sounds a bit weird because we're not used to hear triads and just intonation, but mathematically speaking, it is more consonant than the same triad in 12-tone equal temperament. But what will happen if I transpose that and, for example, play D major chord? Let's compare them. Well, you can hear that a little bit of beating started to go on, that it is a little bit started to go out of tune, but it gets worse, for example, in F-sharp major. Sounds quite off. Uh, again, let's compare. So, this is exactly what Adam Neely was talking about. So, either you have perfect harmony, but then your pitch of your notes kind of drifting up and down and moving about, or you have a stable pitch, like on piano, but then you have to sacrifice your harmony and, you know, you have to use these uh, approximations of just intonation like 12-tone equal temperament. But if we remember that the notes of just intonation were coming to us from the spectrum, from the timbre of the sound, what if we can generate such a spectrum that will give us notes of 12-tone equal temperament? Not just intonation, not simple ratios, but 12-tone equal temperament. Well, I'm not going to tell you how exactly to do it, but I will show you two spectrums and you'll see the main idea. So, okay, spectrum on the left is the kind of organ-like sounding spectrum that is purely harmonic. So it doesn't have all partials of harmonic spectrum, but just some of them. As you can see, there are certain gaps in the spectrum. But because the blue lines, the actual harmonics, align with the dashed gray lines, which marks where the harmonic spectrum is, where the frequency of harmonic spectrum is, it is a part of harmonic spectrum. But the spectrum on the right 
as you can see, those blue lines deviate slightly from the dashed gray lines. So that means that I just took the same harmonics and I just shifted them a little bit in the frequency. So that now, if we perform this sweep, like we did with these two yellow tracks, the perfect consonants, when the partials aligned, will happen not on the perfect ratios of just intonation, but will actually happen on the notes of 12 tone equal temperament. And I'm not going to show you the sweep, but what I'm going to do is that I'm going to load these two spectrums. Uh, I generated a 10 second samples and I loaded them into Serum Synthesizer, have some filtering, have some effects going on. But mainly I use this noise oscillator to load 12 tet compatible spectrum that should play perfectly harmoniously in 12 tone equal temperament. So let's listen to some chords and to check out if it is correct. So, okay, it was this modified spectrum, and let's hear the same chords with the spectrum on the left, the one that is of harmonic partials. Well, quite quickly you can hear a big difference. And let me show you why it is happening. So if we just look at the spectrum of what we were playing here. So I'm going to play a 12-tone version first. So you see, when we play these chords in the spectrum for 12 tone equal temperaments, there is no beating in any of the partials. So these note partials fall precisely on this note partials, on this note partials, you know, and they form this stable sounding chord. But what is happening with harmonic spectrums, because those partials are a little bit off, you will see the beating here, so it changes intensity. One partial is changing intensity, another one is a little bit faster, and in higher frequencies, there are more mess going on. That's why we hear it. This is kind of like a phasery, flangery sounding effect. And this is exactly what it is. So, because we sacrifice purity of harmony in 12 tone equal temperament with harmonic spectrum, but with this modified spectrum, we don't sacrifice any purity of harmony. And we have those 12 notes that don't move about, that are fixed in frequencies. So, with that, we'll be able to play Benedictus puzzle and it will sound perfectly consonant and the pitch won't be able, won't drift. Such an approach can be used uh, for any scale that you like, uh, for 10-tone equal temperament, for 13-tone equal temperament, for non-equally tempered scales, in which, uh, you know, if you use harmonic spectrum, no two notes will sound consonant. But also you have to keep in mind that the further you go away from harmonic spectrum, the more alien and more metallic your timbre will sound. I found this stuff in the book Tuning Timbre Spectrum Scale by William C. Harris. It's a great book that goes in great depth on this topic. And William calls this approach of matching timbre and tuning xantonality. And uh, I believe this approach uh, really leads to new music, or at least to new approach of composing and performing music. Because in these new tunings, like 13 tone equal temperament, there can be new music theory because there are no fifth in this tuning, so can, how can there be a circle of fifth? In other tunings there may be no minor or major chords, so there's really vast unexplored territory. 
that's all I wanted to say in this video. So I'm planning to research this topic further. So if you want to know more about it, if you want to know what is dissonance curves, how to calculate related spectrum to scale, uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel as I will post more videos about it. Leave a comment. Uh, what do you think of that? What would you like to know more about? If you would like to support what I'm doing, uh, follow me on Patreon, check the video description. Um, this topic is largely unexplored, and uh, you know, when people think that we know everything about music, it seems to me that we didn't even scratch the surface of what is possible. So, uh, until next time.